Guys, welcome to another episode of Wrench. I'm Michael. Behind me is a 1969 Porsche 911 that I'm calling Rust Mageddon because I think there's more rust than there is actual solid panels. Today we're going to give it a diet by removing some of those rusty panels. Welcome back. Behind me is this 1969 911. I think there's more actual rust than there is actual body panel. Today I wanna to see kind of what's under uh, some of the stuff. I wanna remove the outer rockers and hopefully start drilling out some of the spot welds for uh, the floors. I have the floor panels to put in. Um, if I can, I'll try to do those first, but I gotta see what I'm working with. So we are digging in with uh, a cutting wheel today and seeing what's underneath all that stuff. Let's get into it before I do a quick word from our sponsor. Guys, buying a used car these days, pretty gnarly. You meet some rando on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and agree to meet either at your house or in some random parking lot. And you're expected to look at this car. You don't really know the history of it. You don't really know the mechanical history of it. You have no idea if that person you're talking to is the actual person that they say they are. You don't know if the money they give you, if it's like a, a cashier's check or a bank check, is fake. Uh, you have no way to verify any of this information and it is really sketchy. That's where Private Auto comes in. Look at how Private Auto is going to change how we buy and sell cars in the future. Gang, Private Auto is the easiest way to buy or sell a car privately. If you're selling a car, you can easily add a vehicle to their listing site. You can set security preferences to help filter out unwanted interactions. If you want, you can choose to only communicate with verified users. Anyone who's been verified with Private Auto has been screened using driver's license verification with facial recognition technology. As a buyer, you can easily schedule a test drive and make an offer. Even better, with their fancy chat feature, you can safely communicate without using your personal contact information. Completing a transaction is easier than ever with Private Auto. Each step of the deal gives you escrow-like safeguards without relying on a third party. First, both parties can verify and approve information such as the sale price and odometer reading. Next, both parties can easily sign and approve the electronic bill of sale. Finally, transfer payment instantly and securely using private auto. What could possibly be easier? So that's private auto. For you guys, for my viewers, they're giving 40% off any listing fees if you wanna sell your car. I've got a link in the description below because they are my first sponsor of the channel. I would love if you would click on that link, download the app, check it out. It'll make me look good to the higher ups over at Private Auto. But more than that, you can get a killer app to buy and sell your car. Now, on with the show. If you guys have never used one of these, this is a uh, spot weld cutting kit I got from uh, Amazon. I will, in fact, I will link it up in the description uh, and or the first comment of this video. And it really makes this thing a lot easier. So you've got basically a, um, a spring-loaded uh, initial bit and you put that bit right where the spot welds 
are on the factory locations. And what happens is this thing will, will, will suck in and then you've got this cutter. The cutter then cuts around the outside of the weld and cuts until you get um, through and to the, the inner layer. What I like to look for typically is it'll kind of sometimes like, especially if it's kind of rusty like this, it'll poof with a little rust when you make it through the initial. There's kind of a give and then it kind of poofs a little bit. Um, I'll show you guys what this looks like in a second. But basically I've, I've cut around the outside of all but uh, one, two, three, four, five, I have six more to go. And I'm gonna try to get in there and kind of wedge it off. And what, what happens is once it breaks, you can really kind of get in there and pull the whole thing out. Uh, then I've got to make another row of, I mean, this thing's half gone anyway, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 16 more on the bottom. And then this whole thing should theoretically like pop off and reveal the inner rocker. unsurprisingly bad, but uh, not exactly what I didn't expect. This is the edge of the floor, which is pretty toasted. Thankfully, I have new floors that are gonna go in, but there's actually not much to mount it to because even the inner panel here, which is on the inside of the car, on this side, is pretty toast. I'm going to um, cut this part off. This has to be cut. The um, quarters, have this new part so no big deal there but i'm going to cut that off and um kind of get the inner and outer rocker off and and this heater tube and just kind of see where we are it's very possible that i'm going to actually just have to weld some you know regular sheet metal in on the inside just to give this thing some structure uh, all the way down to the floor but there's just bondo and you know it's gnarly it's as gnarly as we thought it was everybody hours into digging and we're getting into solid metal here uh, you'll see over here that I'm having a problem getting the uh, jack mount to go out and that's because this thing has been flared um, this thing is sort of curved up and it's not supposed to be you see how it's all arced up here that's from when the the, the jack there's like a, a thing that looks like a spoon that goes in here if it starts pulling out a little bit it'll it'll bend under the weight of the car so I'm gonna to try to heat this thing up and um, see if I can flatten it out. I mean, alternatively, it's only tacked on in these couple of spots here. So I could theoretically uh, just get another one. I'm in the interest of trying to preserve as much of the original sheet metal as possible. I, I will not do that. Um, then the only other part I have to still remove is this little guy here. Um, that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna just kind of see where it is and then I will tell you what my plan is.
Okay, that was a good couple of hours well spent. We've got the inner rocker clamped in here now. All of this has to be finished on the inside, meaning I've got to hit it with a grinding wheel and get it like super cleaned up. Pour 15 the entire thing. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet until I get the rest of the parts. My next task is gonna be to basically cut the floor in half and then cut all the spot welds out as I go. Um, once those are done, I can get this floor clamped in and get a couple of tech screws in here. And that gives me like a nice base to, to start this whole thing from. Sometimes things seem a little worse than they are. I mean, I'm not gonna say this isn't terrible. This is really wrecked. But if you just do a section at a time and you go, okay, here's how it fits together. Here's the part that needs to be cleaned. Here's the part that needs to be replaced. Um, then you're, you know, you just take it one section at a time. All right, so you guys just saw me clean up and then I did some rust converter on here. Actually looks really good. Um, a lot of this stuff here, like on the bottom, will be cut out from the inside and I'll weld a new piece on. And then of course the floor takes up like, it comes all the way out to here. So the floor is all rotted, but the floor comes all the way out. Like if you can imagine, it's, it's this imaginary line that comes out to here. So that will be there. So we'll be pretty much uh, tidy. This is ready for pour 15 now. All right, dudes, it's the next day and uh, I'm getting back to this bad boy. My plan here for the next few is I have this big giant chunk of rear floor pan. It really locates a lot of stuff. The floor is sort of obviously the central part. There's a lot of stuff here that I can make like little patch panels for, but I can't do it until I have something solid to weld to. I'm gonna try to get this thing somehow uh, roughed in place. Uh, and that's gonna require me basically doing 80 billion spot weld drill outs and a lot of finagling. So I'm going to spare you guys most of that stuff. Uh, I'll put the camera on for a little bit of it, but this is gonna be a grind. No pun intended, but it's sort of intended.
guys. Mission accomplished. I mean, it needs just a ridiculous amount of fettling to, to get, you know, correct, but it's there. More importantly, it'll serve as a stable base for this inner rocker. So as I get the rest of this stuff dialed in, I'll actually be able to attach this thing uh, semi-permanently and get it kind of together. So hope you guys enjoyed episode two of this craziness. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. We'll see you next time.